Yeah, yeah. let's get them in here. Yeah. If you wait long enough, well, they're going to be here in a few hours. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so this is Movie Madness. And uh, Backstreet Boys, if you hear us, we'd love to have you on. Well, easily kick Casey out. Be fine. <laughs> uh, um, this is no, I got to be here for that. I got. And uh, today, I, I couldn't tell you what. What Are we doing? rolling already? Yeah, we're rolling, buddy. Oh, oh Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you even do the intro music. No, I just I did the the card was up. I recorded that for a little while. Oh. And, um, you guys were talking when I was doing this, so I said screw it. But I, I couldn't tell you what we're doing today because Garrett didn't write it on the top again. It's 90 sci-fi. Oh. <laughs> 90 sci-fi. Oh, so oh, 90 sci-fi. Got it. 90s. I, oh, it Sci- didn't have a title, so you know. Sci. Are oh, you not spelling it like how the the channel likes to spell it? Where it's just yeah. S Y. We'll spell it the right way. Siffy? No. Yeah, it's yeah. dumb. Yeah. No. So it's sci-fi. Before we get started, we have because we don't have a commercial made yet, so we bring the owner of our sponsor and is making Movie Madness possible for a second season, Travis Goff. How you doing? And Trav here is the proud owner and operator of Goff Family Chiropractic. Correct. You will see in uh, the YouTube video the website it link is in there, and uh, you need your back cracked. Go to Travis. I'm the guy. Yeah. He's the reason I still uh, I can stand up straight. Well, and Todd's the reason that he couldn't stand yeah. up straight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm the reason Todd can't stand up straight. <laughs> <laughs> and Coffin's the reason that Todd. Dies, right? yeah, it's, yeah. But so we're starting off 90 sci-fi. First things first, we have Dark City yep. versus Lost in Space. And as always, I reserve the right to have one over rule, which I'm not using because we haven't chosen anything yes. yet. <laughs> but yes. uh, so, Travis, because I know you like giving us a little so overview, dark, yeah. what's Dark City about? Dark City. Uh, John Murdoch awakens alone in a strange hotel to find out he is wanted for a series of brutal murders. And who plays this John Murdoch? Character? I'm not sure. I don't know the actor's name. Rufus Sewell. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. The bad, the bad guy from A Knight's Tale. Yes. <laughs> so, so good. <laughs> the problem is, is he can't remember if he did those things or he didn't. He's in, like, the dream state. And so he's got to go, you know, for a brief moment, he's convinced that maybe he did and he's just lost his mind. Or maybe he's being put on. Maybe ah. he's being framed. So he doesn't know. He wakes up and it's like, it's aftermath. Now we have to go back and figure out what just happened. Kind of like The Hangover. And Total Recall. Yeah. Wow. Kind of similar, like Total Recall, yeah. I think. Yeah. It definitely has a Total Recall vibe to it. So they stumble on this uh, fiendish underworld controlled by a group of ominous beings collectively known as the Strangers. Now, this wasn't one of my <laughs> favorite movies. Uh, it was kind of like, I don't know, it was like dark and in the past, but futuristic. I think the lighting was very low, right? Yeah, it was like black and white almost. It was very dark. It's all, it's it's literally, because it's dark city, it's literally all at night. It's always night throughout the whole thing. And then what they end up finding out is they're literally on a ship. Mm -hmm. The city is a ship. ship. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in, and it's just in space. They're, they're kind of lost in space. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. 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 Uh, It's, yeah, it's it's one of those movies like it's weird, but then like it's one of those movies where you, the more you think about it, you're like, that could happen. It was, it 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 gets better the more you think about it. Okay, so, the one th- the thing with Dark City, it's the concept's amazing, and like the movie itself, it it looks good. I don't know how well I feel about the execution of it. Yeah, it's a sci- it's a good sci fi plot, but the execution was what? missed. Yeah. And then we have Lost in Space. Didn't that just get remade too? For yeah, Netflix uh, they had or a something? series, Lost right? Yeah, yeah. Lost in yeah. Space. Yes, they had yeah. a series on Netflix, yeah. which was the original series in the '60s. Yeah. But Danger, Will Robinson, yeah. Danger, which it's uh, the concept is really taken from uh, what the hell's the book? It was like a 1960s um, right. but the, TV series, the concept, but it was a novel, and the the novel was it's not Robinson Crusoe. It's the family that gets stranded on the island. Swiss Family Robinson? Yes, Swiss Family Robinson. That's where they took the concept. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. 
the 60s show was was huge back in the day and it was really one of those first true sci-fi shows even before uh, star trek and this reboot has joey tribbiani in it uh lacey chabert it's actually badass in it a young lady so like she's still a like, his in name, Matt leblanc fire. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Joey Tribbiani. Uh, uh, Lacey uh, Shaber before she was love her smoking still, hot. Uh, still awkward teens. Yeah, she's like yeah. In and her awkward teen phase. I personally love the Lost in Space movie. So I, lo- yeah, I, I without I love a doubt. Movie. I I thought the the plot like people were like oh the plot's confused but like it, the thing is is some people are thrown off by time travel mm-hmm. and unless your time travel doesn't follow like. The actual, like, real principles, like, applied laws of, like, okay, if time travel is real, this is what it would be like. Right. If it, if it doesn't make sense to, to those, then you have good time travel stuff. Right, right, right. And this is one of those that's, that's real. Like, the, they accidentally go through, like, that time window, and they don't know that they went through a so time So you guys are hearing like, it here know. first. Garrett is telling the world time travel is real. So if you have any questions about it, if you want to do it, contact Garrett. Reach out to his personal stuff because we don't want it flooding our yeah. our, our podcast. Got to be careful. But the government if, will want to take. If that you want to create, if you want to create a flashpoint thing, or you know, well, like so end game, like did j- we j- get j- into j- the because like the flash TV stuff like started to not make sense with time travel. It's like can't yeah. take, you can't take a you can't you can't take a past version of yourself and let him die so that you can live on. It doesn't work like that, right? It's true. Yeah. Right. You can't. It just you just can't. So so we're going lost in space with us, I, I believe. Gentlemen. I would go lost in space. Lost in space. It's 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 yeah. a little more fun, and you know. I liked it better. Okay. Uh, Man yeah, LeBlanc is kind of badass throughout the whole movie, yeah. and which is cool. And like, I, I would agree definitely with the uh, the uh, the idea of Dark City is uh, better, mm-hmm. even uh, as as a script, but the execution. The execution uh, fell way didn't, short. Didn't nail. Didn't nail it. You so know, then so. we have Cross Worlds versus Bill and Ted 2. Okay. A bogus So journey. a bogus journey is, isn't is even, in my opinion, remotely close as good as the first one, right? No. I, it, I, it's not. It, it was oh, a, I love it. it was like, I think it's great. It felt very, like, movie set. Like, you know, they yeah. they, you know, they were... They saw the devil and yeah. the Grim Reaper so I, and, 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 and Station, I have, and I didn't yes. like... I have, like a very, I have a funny story about Bill and Ted, too. So in my, in my early 20s, and I, I personally, I like Bill and Ted, too. It's not Bill and Ted 1, but I like the fact they didn't just do a repeat of Bill and Ted 1 with the, the time travel and everything. They, they added other elements to it. And... I was I had to take a road trip with one of my buddies who and so this is like maybe 2004 2005 at the latest and he had a DVD player in his vehicle and we were going the coolest thing right like he put it in himself and everything so I took some mushrooms <laughs> and Jesus. for this road trip so and we hit the blockbuster and rented some movies uh-huh. and we watched two movies one of them was the big lebowski and the other one was bill and ted 2 the dude and the dude. At, at the peak of my trip i we were watching bill and ted so the whole hell scene peak of the vacation traveling or the peak of your trip of my mushroom trip okay and <laughs> was like so i'm i'm tripping and bill and ted are in hell and it was one of the most <laughs> amazing things i've like, ever <laughs> seen in like this my life that's one of the best his, his eyes describe it you go i'm on a trip and bill and ted mm-hmm. are in hell yeah, <laughs> like, and i i just i just like it it's not as good as the original but there, with bill and ted 2 it is such a fun ride they, that's and, the one with the robots right yeah yeah oh, i love that movie and yeah. then at the end, great. where they go to the future and actually finally learn how to be rock stars, and they come back, and Bill's got the mustache, and like they got the kids, and everything. Like it just, and then the song they play at the end, yeah, it's, like, great. It, 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 hey, it's great. While we're talking about it, like sidebar, what did you guys think of Face the Music? I enjoyed it. I didn't like it. You didn't like I'll it? Re- oh yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Like it, no comment. It was <laughs> no one comment. way or another. It was no comment. It was probably 10 it. years too late, yeah. I think. Yeah. 
and I, I I thought the plot was great. It just I felt like it was it was too late. I'm I'm one of those people where if you go and make a sequel, and the main plot of the sequel is to set up the children as like the next like generation of it. I instantly hate it. Okay. It's just some. It, it bugs me, and it it feels like a lot of movies do that nowadays. But uh, so, Trev, what's Crossworlds? Very forgettable movie. <laughs> uh, it was like a staff and a crystal and. Um, Rucker Howard. God, it, it just it didn't. I mean, that was a movie you could have on in the background. You're not really watching it. You're not really ignoring it. And it's on. It's fodder is what you're saying. It just doesn't yeah. do anything for me. So what are, where are we going with this, guys? Uh, it's Bogus. it's definitely going to be, it's, it's probably going to definitely be Bill and Ted 2 over yeah, Crossworlds. Yeah, I agree. But, but Crossworlds, it, I, I don't know. I like I like it a lot. Like I was, it, um, Rucker Howard had won me over. What they call it, a scepter? With, That's what yeah. it was, yeah. a scepter. Rucker Howard had won me over with Split Second. Okay. I love Split Second. And if people have never seen that, that's just, I love that movie. And so Crossworlds comes out, and then the guy, uh, uh, it's Josh something. He was in um, Don't Tell Mom, The Babysitter's Dad, and, um, well, I can't. You're talking all through yeah. um, the like, And, like, four brothers, and he's in, he's in, he's in his, so they was, when he was kind of, like, coming up, and, and, and it's literally, like, parallel dimensions josh charles and josh charles and and um and i think it's patrick wilson is the bad guy right the same bad guy from uh lethal weapon three and he's in it they know how to uh pass like they know the doorways in our world to go to different dimensions and it's it, i don't know it's 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 a cool fun movie but i don't know if it can even go above even bill and ted too as much as i just like me personally, oh, do you know who's in Crossroads? I completely forgot who was Christy Swanson, Jake like, Black. Jack, oh yeah, what? Or am I thinking well, a different? Well, see different now movie? that that changes everything. Mm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that okay. changes everything. Really? No, <laughs> no really. Still, no. <laughs> I love it's still, Jack Black. It's still Bill and Ted. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now I'm curious where you guys go with this. So Village of the Damned, right? Is that the next one on the list? Yeah, yeah it's Village of the Damned versus Fire in the Sky. So Village, both of these movies were like you know pitted against each other correctly. So, Village of the Damned, 10 months, in a sm- 10 months after the small town in California uh, named Midwich gets struck by a mysterious event where 10 women are spontaneously pregnant. They give birth. Now, My these bad. kids My bad. grow, right? <laughs> My, like that. These kids grow at an abnormal rate. And I it only stopped there once. <laughs> alarmingly clear that they can read minds and they can actually um, force the adults to hurt themselves. And all the kids pretty much look the same, don't they? I think they're like all little blonde kids. Yeah, there's one who looks a little. There's one who's just a little different than everyone else. Yeah, and but the cast in it was pretty wild. You have his Christopher Reeve, uh, Kirstie um, Alley, Mark yeah. Hamill from uh, Star Wars. Yeah, uh, his, was it was he the sheriff or the Reverend? I can't remember. I, I, God, I, I haven't seen it in a while. But you know what I'm talking about. There's one yeah. kid that's different because they were born in pairs. So each right. each male pairs with a female, but the one female, one of the females died at, at birth. So this one kid, like they all walk two by two, and there's uh. always the one kid is last. So he's different than all the other kids because he doesn't have that bond right. that the rest he's do the with each other. And then like not only with the pair one, but then with each other as well. Sounds a lot like a like a X Files sort of. It's it is. It's very. It's kind right. of X Files. Yeah. yeah. You know. It's it, it's. Uh, but it's. Uh, it's a really good movie. But then there's Fire in the Sky that which literally made me afraid of oh, the my sky. God. Yeah. The dark. Because and pretty much everything. Fire in the Sky is actually based on a true, true story. True yeah. Fire in the Sky that like happened. like it was the, Arizona loggers, scene, right? Yes. Yeah. The scene where he is, where. They abducted. see where, where he's abducted is scary enough, and then he wakes up in latex and can't yeah, breathe. But when, but when he 
the scene where he's scared again and then he goes back and you see what he saw is utterly terrifying. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Okay. This guy is it, if, if, and it's funny, like if you were to watch it now, you'd be like, Okay, what's so scary about it? But it's like at the you're time. also older. Like yeah. imagine right. that when did this come out? Did you have a uh, date on this? Yeah, nineteen ninety three. Okay. I was like either nine or ten watching this movie. Yeah. Like so I was like like because yeah. yeah, it was yeah. it was very it was everything was uh, and the way there, it was, was no, shot, it was all practical. Yeah, yeah there was so, no uh, like it wasn't like you know. Um, but at PGI, the time, CGI, so, it yeah. was so, everything was practical. Yeah. So when this guy goes through this whole uh, uh, reenactment, the the whole reenactment of all the stuff, like it's he's bumping in the walls and he's really bumping into the walls and it looks like he's on strings, obviously, but he's like he looks like he's in zero g and he's and then like here's the you know the aliens trying to grab for, for him and everything and they're all real like practical and it was it's like when you're you nine or that. ten watching this movie it's it was terrifying I was, Shit. Ter- I was terrified you know that was the that was the time in our life where the internet did not exist no and when you watch something on like PBS, they were talking about this this particular movie and like unsolved mysteries. Yeah, an like unsolved mystery. Remember that one yes. with the with the big with the house, the farmhouse, yep. that video where the where like people were like, we don't know if this is real. You know, I can't right. find that. Yeah, a lot of the stuff is scrubbed. Yeah. You gotta wonder why can't I find that video? And I don't know. They played that on national news, right. and now I can't find that video on YouTube. I can find anything in five seconds on my phone. I can't find that video. Well, weird. weird. Well, so, Garrett, I just have to tell you, the truth is out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Like, I so, found out about Fire this guy on back at comic books. Like, yeah. Because that's where, like, they had it. Well, it was like a group of loggers that came back, and the one guy. I got, no, I got to call my boss. I'm going Fire in the Sky River Village in the right. I, mean, I agree. Fire in the sky. I would agree. Um, I would agree as well. And I would. And if you guys keep on going, I would go con- contact over arrival. <laughs> wow. Uh, so. So fire in the sky. I'm assuming won that. Yeah. It did. Yeah, I would yeah. say fire in the sky. We could talk about that for a few more minutes because everybody likes that. I mean, a lot of things built off of that encounter too. A lot of sci-fi. Right. A lot of unsolved mysteries. Is it true? Is it untrue? Is the government lying to As us? As you guys were like describing it, it kind of reminded me of the the movie that came out last year, Nope, uh, by Jordan Peele. So I, I can see where you, where you can yeah. see that it's more of a very smaller, contained kind of thing. And yeah. like, with the aliens, you see the aliens like in flashback. Oh, okay. And, and everything else is just like these guys just going nuts because like yeah. they don't know it, whether or not they're crazy or they're not because uh, the people are telling them like this is what happened like it's not what and right. they're like but i remember this right yeah. now trev why don't you let us know what contact is okay so contact was uh, i thought it was a pretty interesting movie like you know when i watched this i think i was homesick from school or playing hooky and we had the vhs tape that we didn't get to on the weekend and uh, Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey are in this flick, and it came out in 1997. Um, Jodie Foster plays Dr. Ellie Arroway, and she races to interpret a possible message originating from a Vega star system. Right. And once first contact with an extraterrestrial intelligence is proven, uh, Arroway contends with restrictive national security advisor, James Woods. Highest IQ in Hollywood. He's an incredible actor. Mm-hmm. I've always been a huge fan. Um, In case you know him from Family Guy. You know, yeah. You're right. You're, you're not wrong. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Um, and religious fanatics bet on containing the implications of such the event. So an incredible message is found hidden in the signal, but Air will be Airway, the, uh, Jodie Foster's character, is going to be the one sent to the call. And I remember watching... You know, on the film where she's here, and she does this, like, just, you to everyone else, it looks like this thing, right? She just, it does it just drop or right. fall? Yeah. And to her, an entire um, storyline developed right. in that whole thing. And so now she's the only one with a storyline, and everybody else just watched this thing come to the ground. Mm-hmm. And so what she saw was actual, like, what what happened, but nobody really knows. I mean, right. I, I really liked the movie. I thought it was really good. And why don't you give us the overview of Arrival? Arrival. So the Arrival came out in 1996. Um, radio astronomer Charlie Sheen detects a strange signal. 
but it ends up being <laughs> <Very believable. laughs> Charlie Sheen. <laughs> he's got a he's something strange, uh, but ends up being fired uh. and his reputation destroyed. Um, the climatologist um, finds evidence of bizarre temperature rises, suggesting you know a 12 degree increase by 2006. Global warming. Uh, all the attempts are made to kill both of these characters in the movie. And so it's not just a government conspiracy and a cover-up. It's like aliens were actually at work trying to make Earth more hospital environment for them. For them. And so now you have pretty gruesome scenes with the extraterrestrials. They were pretty cool. I mean, the scenes were good. Um, but you never know who to trust in this situation either because, like, you know, who's trying to cover it up? Does the government... Trying to cover that up, and they know, or the aliens controlling the government. Like we really just don't know. Was this know. also just remade? No. I feel no. like there was a so there was a sci-fi movie just like that just recently came out called Arrival. So I think like both of these movies go right along that whole um, concept of first contact. you know first contact with an extraterrestrial species. Is it intelligent? Does it mean to cause harm? Does it not mean to cause us harm? And, and you know, and both of these movies. Um, uh, I liked Arrival felt a little cheesy to me. Like I just like some of those gruesome scenes were a little, uh, I don't know, but contact I thought was like, you know, as the time stood pretty scientific, pretty on point, very believable. And the thing like that I like about contact is the way it's used. Like you're not necessarily like seeing the aliens and everything. Everything right. is, Again, using the viewer's own imagination and suspense to further that movie, and a lot of that goes like falls upon Jodie Foster's shoulders. Yeah, and she, she crushed. crushed the film. Yep, she crushed the role. She did an excellent job. After researching, uh, there was a 2016 arrival, and it's not connected, okay. but it it's very similar, which is weird to me. That it's like. They're, it's both about aliens coming to the Earth to try and communicate, and it was interesting. But yeah, um, for the I'd probably go contact with this personally. So we've got the pen. I can get up and write those two in, or we can move on and we'll let him know when he comes back. Um, I'm guessing you're going contact also. Yes. Yeah, so okay. we have contact yeah. and fire in the sky moving forward. And then we have. Didn't he say he would go contact with that as well? He did. Yeah. 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 Without so we, a doubt. we have hackers versus disturbing behavior. <laughs> I'll start out with Hackers. It's not first on the list. Like, like so, Hackers, I always... Was this Angelina Jolie's first role? Like One of her first big ones, at least. Yeah, at least yeah. her first big role. It's the first thing I ever remember seeing her in. Yeah, I think... Because yeah. after this, didn't she do the the one with uh, Billy Bob Benders? Thornton is what she did after this. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it, Joe. <laughs> the old blood now, what was that? What was that one movie she did with Antonio Banderas? <sighs> Um, I'm trying to think of what it was called. She did that. I think it was either after or before this. Um, hmm. Let me see. So Hackers I'm starts out and oh. actually in the perfect time frame. So in 1995, the first time in history that there were more emails sent than actual, like, paper and envelope. Right. And so the Internet started to become this new frontier. Yeah. And so the biggest concern was, is like, your information is going to be out there and not protected. So, of course, they go ahead and make a, a fear-based film. So in 1995, a uh, teenage hacker finds himself framed for the theft of millions of dollars from a major corporation. Yep. You know? So the master hacker played, um, what was his name? Matthew it, Lillard, mm -hmm. was it? Yeah. So, yeah, I love him. Yep. I love him. Um, he... Um, He's been banned from touching a keyboard for seven, or no, not him. I'm sorry. So this, the master hacker, the the kid, was banned from touching a computer for over seven years after crashing um, over 1,500 Wall Street computers. Yeah. That's Stock what it was. Exchange. The New York Stock Exchange. Yes. So now he's keen to get back in front of a Johnny monitor. Johnny Lee Miller. Is yeah, so he finds himself in more trouble than ever because... You know, he's capable, and the other guy, the the master hacker, yeah. and it was so cool, the scene, you know, when he's sitting there, and he's on 
uh, a table of glass, and he's not actually touching anything physical. It was just like infrared stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's moving his hands, and you could see the columns of information. It was almost like a city layout, but everybody's city layout. Absolutely. It was just like if you were on a computer at this home on this level, it was just showing a feed of what you were doing. Right. And, you know, that's a, ideally how information would be. Right out there but it doesn't look like that but that's kind of like a virtual reality of information right. and you know it, it was a pretty cool movie i, I liked it a lot I, I feel like people give it a bad rap a lot um i so hacker hackers was one of the first movies that made it big that wasn't made by a big studio yeah right like, it, like that started a lot of those like like hackers but people wanted to hack, and so they right. watched the movie to see if there was anything in there that they could, like... Right. You know, let me get Windows 98 and 95. Right. Like, Hackers was actually the inspiration for Kevin Smith to go on and make Clerks. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. He went and was saw... Was it Kevin success? Smith, if you're watching, thank you. Yeah, right? Like, Yeah, he's the man. He, oh, 100%. Was it, like, the success of, of this kind of i mean not it, it gave him the in, so like it gave him the inspiration that somebody on a low budget yeah could go out and create it you didn't necessarily need the be- like he always credits go like he he's told the story where he would there's a movie theater in new york city that he would always go to and in hackers was playing and he went by himself went and saw it and then a year later that's where he did the debut of Clerks before oh, he sent sick. it out to Sundance. Yeah, and like it, he always, he always can he always gives uh, hackers the props that he the hackers was the reason. the one movie yeah. that you know let him know that he could get bigger than he was. Now then we have Disturbing Behavior, which was a Josh Harnett, Katie Holmes I, joint. So this movie, you know, I did not know existed. And I went home and I ended up watching it last night. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. So this is and fresh so, off. Yeah, fresh, fresh off fresh that. off watching it. So like uh, coming up through like, you know, the teenage soap opera Dawson's Creek, like all the characters, you know, I watched, you know, James Vanderbeek go off and do varsity blues right. and um That's Oh it. god, what was his name? <laughs> Played Pacey Witter. Do you oh, know? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm slipping and he starred in the skulls and he had yeah, a couple yeah. other movies that were just great uh and so he was like, on fringe he was a dude yes on fringe. yep he was on fringe which is kind of like an x-files spinoff in a way and i i love the shit out of yeah fringe. joshua and jackson that's his name josh, josh jackson. jackson yep huh. so uh katie holmes so Garrett, right was, down fire in the sky in contact Sweet. you won we just we can't argue it's i mean it's contact it is. It's contact. It's just. It's so good. It's like that. It's like a really good like thinking man's movie. So it's Travis like, watched Disturbing Behavior for the first time last. Yeah, night. remember the other yeah. day we talked about yeah. it. I'm like, I've never seen this movie. It slipped past me, so I went and watched it. It was, it was incredible. Awesome, right? yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was kind of like um, what was it? The Bedford Wives m- the, the, the merged the with yeah. the Stepford Wives yeah. merged with. Um, I can't write today. Badass high, high school kids, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. It's like uh, it's like Village of the the Damned meets. Uh, uh, Step for wives. wives. Yeah. Yeah. And like the, the thing about disturbing behavior, I think the cast was good. Uh, up until that point, people just saw Katie Holmes as Zelda, Oh, Joey from yeah, Dawson's Joey. Creek, where I think this really gave her the bona fides as a, a true actress. Yeah, she did a great job. But is it movie. better than hackers? Well that well, uh, that's what argu- you, what that's arguable. Here? I it's hackers for me. Okay. okay. I love disturbing behavior. Don't get me wrong, okay? But hackers is hackers, okay? Yeah. It's 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 just it, hack the planet, like okay. you know what I mean? Like it's 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 great. Casey, Matthew Lillard. I, I have a bias toward Matthew Lillard because I don't know if I've ever told this story on on the podcast. I met him uh, at get a convention. Out. I met him. <laughs> He is one of the nicest yeah. people in the world. He when before he said anything to me when I first met him, he walked up. I I love telling the story, so I apologize. I said a lot. He walks up to me, doesn't say a word to me. I'm like, oh, I love Scooby Doo. I love all these uh, scream and everything you've done. He walks up to me, looks down at me because he's he's tall. My height. And he puts his hands perfectly on my head. And, yeah, and he says he says you have the most perfect hair I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> and I 
died. He starts doing the Scooby-Doo voice. Such a nice dude. But yeah, no, Hackers is great. Yeah. Hackers is one of his best. It, 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 probably one of his best roles he's, he's done. Oh, it was one of his funniest roles. I love it. Because he's so animated yeah, throughout the movie. Yeah, that's, you know that's I mean? just... That's, that's is he in another, another movie on this list? Serial killer. You know what I mean? He is in this. Yeah, he's in another movie on this list. So, Trav, you would have gone on Disturbing Behavior? Uh, no, actually. I thought Hackers was... Uh, I liked Hackers a lot better. And plus, and now given the backstory that Kevin Smith, uh, it gave him that... Uh, inspiration. Inspiration. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I, I'm gonna go with hackers, yeah, and hackers if Kevin Smith, you you better pick up and watch the show. We've got a Mall Rats two theme for you. Well, yeah, and uh, yeah, we well, got Mall Rats two. Yeah. All we've got out for you. I yeah. have I we've have got, hugged Kevin Smith. Have you really? Yeah. So uh, about ten years ago now, when they did uh, Jay and Silent Bob Super Groovy cartoon movie, yeah, they were he was touring it, and after you watched the movie, he did a Q and A, and it was on the. Jay, Jay and Silent Bob Get Old podcast. Yes. And so I, I was the first one in line to ask a question. My question was, can I have a hug? And I got to go on stage, give Kevin a hug, and then give Muse a hug. And you can hear Muse on there like, oh, you hug like a bear. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> So I, I've started, and it's taken a long time, of my celebrity idols that I get to hug. And yeah. so far I have Kevin Smith and Mick Foley on those. Amazing. On that Mick list. Foley? Yeah, I just did that this past summer. Mick Foley went to Cortland, New York. I know. Yeah, he jumped out of the uh, one of the dorm rooms yeah. there from the second floor. Yes. Yeah, I remember that. I uh, I got to hug James Marsters. And and you cried, didn't you? <laughs> A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have multiplicity versus Mars attacks. I have a funny story. If you want to hear it, I'll take two seconds. Go do it. So uh, on my honeymoon, we were on a cruise ship. And they were looking for newlyweds. And, of course, my wife is like, I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> you don't ever want to do that on a cruise. <laughs> this, it's filmed. It's broadcast throughout the ship. Uh-huh. Oh, we know. Um, oh, no. <laughs> the, the, we're aware of things that are <laughs> so the, so so broadcast ship. throughout it, ships. <laughs> it was uh, my wife and I, um, uh, another couple I don't know, and Hulk and Linda Hogan. What? <laughs> yeah. So we're on. <laughs> we're Did on you the, guys compare pythons? No. <laughs> yeah. So we're on the show. Pretty big dude. Yeah. So I'm, I got known as the guy after this. So they're like, write down a few things that drive you crazy about your spouse. I'm like, writing, 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 <laughs> thinking like, you know, next thing you know, they're like, Hogan, what do you write? He's like, she still drives me crazy when, and I'm thinking to myself, fuck, I done wrote down, like, leaves her socks by the fucking hamper, <laughs> like, all the things that drive me actually crazy, and I answer this, and all of a sudden, he just pats me out of the arm, he's like, brother, <laughs> you picked the wrong answers. <laughs> yeah. You messed up, brother. So I was known as that guy. That guy. <laughs> that guy. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> Good job being that guy. that guy. Somebody didn't understand the assignment. I didn't yeah, understand that assignment. It was a pretty embarrassing <laughs> moment of my life. You still married to her? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, want to make uh, sure that that went through. Like, oh, that was so multiplicity. She'd throw you off the ship. <laughs> oh shit. Multiplicity is Michael Keaton and Andy McDowell, and Michael Keaton does just not have enough time throughout the day to complete everything that needs to be. Now, oh, this is a funny movie. This is an amazing movie. So he, there's this new technology where you can clone yourself. <laughs> so Michael Keaton clones himself. And it's working out great. So he, he ends up with three clones. The one with, uh, we'll say, that's mentally defected. Yeah, the because gay, they clone the clone. Right. And then you have, You're not supposed to clone the clone. You can't clone a clone. And then you have the gay one, and yeah. then you have like the real, real raunchy one. Yeah. So the gay one is the first one, I think, that he... The uh, second. Oh, so it's the raunchy yeah. one. And yeah, then, the raunchy one is... And then yeah. he's like, what the hell? Like, this isn't what I want, and, and makes another one. And then they clone the clone. <laughs> yeah. And it just... They clone two, the the, the hard yes. one. And he's... And, and then and then the, he's, like, literally, like, defective. Like, he's wearing Cause, goggles. Because the crash he, he one calls, lot, doesn't yeah, want to do shit. So yeah, he and he calls the... It's the original clone he calls him steve and that's yeah. not his name he's like they see a thief yeah like he talks like that the whole time and he's like i, I like pizza steve like yeah. and it, it's just it's such a so... funny endearing yeah movie i i i like it now this might not be a popular opinion 
in this room right now. Mars Attacks just didn't do shit for me. It didn't when I was younger, and I just watched it, and it's a little better now that I also understand more about movies, that it's a, it's a send-up of, like... Like it's almost a parody movie. It, it is. Like, it is. It is. No, I, it, I love it. It's not quite. It's not fully. It's like it's. It is. It's. It's what they call like the sun dub. It's the. Yeah. It's the sun dub to like all those movies like back then. The, the like those goofy sci fi movies that they were, made it comical. Yeah, they made it the, comical. The cast. Jack Black was in it. Yeah, uh, like the, uh, the cast of he, that he was melted like, away. You, like you will never. Michael J. Fox. Almost everybody died in the movie. Yeah. Um, you will never get a cast okay. in a movie. That amazing again? No, well, you can't. I, I, I everyone was in it. Reason that everyone was in it. Almost everybody died. I everybody did a cameo. It, it didn't hit for me. Jack Nicholson died twice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> is that there was so much hype around it? Right. And I think it was overhyped in my mind. I'm like, because I, I couldn't wait to watch it. Right. Was this movie based on the actual like Mars Attacks um, radio? station kind of it was like all of book that. reading it was that yeah. and it was like war of the world yeah. and it was yeah. like, and like but like and then they mixed in like the goofy stuff and then they wanted it to be like funny like let, let's face it the aliens are funny yeah they like are. you know what i mean the you ack, think it's gonna like ack, ack, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, like, they are absolutely frightening looking well they're frightening looking yeah and you gotta think too it's it's a Tim Burton movie, like yeah, yeah. And so that's where that's where like in retrospect like we should have known but we were too young to know when it came right, out. Like yeah. we went to the th- I went to the theaters with Adam, and I think, and I don't think his dad took us, or maybe my dad was there. Too. I don't know, but like we, like we left, and me and Adam were like, "What the hell was that?" And we didn't get it because we didn't get it. <laughs> right? I don't you know think right? there yeah, was. Yeah. There's nothing to get. Yeah, you're like yeah, but you see, it's, we didn't even understand what it was. Like if you would have said, "Oh, it's a uh, it's a send up," I wouldn't have understood. Right. What that at that age? Do you have a, what year it is on that? Like uh, uh, ninety six. Yeah, I still didn't even. At, at, yeah. You know, at I like thirteen. <laughs> I, didn't I, I, I that, yeah. wouldn't have no, still known what a send up was. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, so where are we going with this, guys? It's multiplicity for me. I would oh, go goodness. Mars Attacks. Personally. I'd go Mars Attacks. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh. <laughs> wow. You're not, not, you're not gonna. I'm not gonna overrule that. Yeah. Okay. I like Mars Attacks. I like the the whole cast. I think it's kind of fitting for what it's gonna go up against next round. Yeah. So next we have Congo versus Species. I loved Congo. That's Congo for me. I love it's Congo. The, to me, this is the easy one. Species is a cool concept. Yeah. You know what I mean? So this like was the just big, the biggest draw of the movie. Like even on HBO, even on everything was that she was naked in the movie. Right. That was the biggest thing, because it's that was alien. the only important thing that actually really happened it's in the movie. It's a humanoid alien praying man. Like, yeah, she yeah. wants to be pregnant. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, and she was gonna kill that one guy, but then he was sick, so she just left him alone. Yeah, so right. she knew instinctively. Yeah. So it's Congo it, was amazing. It, Congo. Have you ever seen Congo? No. Dude. So. Congo, going going back to when this movie um, started, which was also 1995, it was on the Joe Rogan podcast that in that area, there's actually six foot chimpanzees, like the missing, link, the missing link, link between like a gorilla and the the chimpanzees that we have now. And he's like, and they have above average intelligence, where they will actually hunt with spears and hunt in groups and like take down like tigers. And you already know how strong a chimp is. Wait, wait, now make it six feet tall. Yeah, this is real. So, it's, so like it's not so a true story. In, like it's a fictional yeah, story. Based this is on a fictional Michael, story. It's no, based on a Michael Crane book. Yeah, but, yeah, based on a Michael Crane book. But now, in, yeah, in um, this uh, technology um, firm essentially hires uh, this team to go and look in the Congo for these. Uh, They're looking for, the for diamonds, diamonds, yeah. For these, like, larger... But, right. But um, they end up getting attacked by... Is it, they're all white, right? Yeah, the white they're gorillas, white, yeah. All these white gorillas that are that are uh, oh. very smart and extremely aggressive. And so then, then you follow the second team that goes out to try right. and find everybody and all that. And it's... Um, it's just great. They, so they, but they go along with uh, another ape who's very smart and does sign language. So it's like her and the interpreter, who's yeah. the, who's, who's the, uh, like you know, like the, essentially like the main guy. And then, um, uh, is it Laura? Laura Linney is the is the is the main female, and uh, she plays in uh, Ozark. Yeah. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, what's why? Why can't I? Why am I skipping on uh, Winston Zedmore's real? Ernie Hudson. Ernie Hudson yes. is uh plays someone from 
uh, from Africa. I don't know if he's actually from. Um, where is he from? And the, it doesn't matter. He's a, he has an African accent in the thing. Uh, in well, the you also got Tim Curry. Yeah. You have yeah. Tim Curry. Uh, yeah. Bruce Tim Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Campbell. Bruce Campbell. I love Bruce Campbell. Oh, dude. Yeah. Uh, so Such it's a good dude. it's it's a really cool movie, and especially at the end with with how everything goes kind of like ballistic and it's just a really cool movie huh. like all the, all the way through i always so, enjoyed it so uh, i love i it love sounds it. I like garrett's going congo i'm going congo, congo easy congo right. i yeah. mean i it doesn't matter what i'd say but i i would say congo too probably then and then uh, we have godzilla versus wing commander uh. wing commander <laughs> in my opinion is horrible you yeah. don't you don't worse like than commander? godzilla oh I, it's bad Wing Commander, like I was a huge. No one fan likes the, Wing Commander. I was a huge fan of the video games, and that I was I feel super Wing stoked Commander's for this movie. Better than Godzilla. Cheesy special effects, lame dialogue. Yes, it was just it was horrible. It was like Star. It was Sorry. like Starship Troopers, movie. like dumb cousin that nobody wants to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, like, agreed. I mean, I, I I can't exactly disagree with that statement, but I still like it. Uh, well, I don't get what, what about what about then the nineties Godzilla. So was it Matthew Broderick? The uh, Matthew Roger, yeah, yeah. Well, and then like well, no with Wing Commander, you had, it was <laughs> yeah, Freddie is. Prince Jr. and Matthew Lillard. Like it, like it had so much potential, but like you said, like it's just you make garbage. one movie and your career tanks. Yeah, uh, now, that, that might have been it. The with Godzilla, like there was so much hype and tie-in and everything else, and that album that came out with it was great. Was that album? That was album was huge. Fire. Soundtrack, yeah, like. And now the, I think what had happened with this is like they tried to appease too many demographics at one time, and they wanted to make it family friendly. They didn't want to make it too like intense. They didn't want it to get so confused with the Japanese version, so they made it Americanized. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I. The acting in it's great. The the plot I actually think is a great plot. Yeah, two hundred. What was it? How many? Two hundred eggs. Yeah, like it. They're in, like, in before MSG, they like, hatch and kill the rest of humanity, we've got to stop this from happening. And I, I actually watched it not too long. I actually watched it after we watched the more recent Godzilla. I watched watched it with the kids, and the kids really really enjoyed it. And like it spinned off a cartoon that wasn't that bad. I, me Cartoon pers- might have been better than the movie. Yeah, like, I was gonna say. And, and Matthew Broderick is always good. Um, it, I, I would have, out of those two movies, picked Godzilla personally. But again, I don't have a skin in the game. Right sounds now. like nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, here's Travis a- sounds like he hates Wing Commander as much as I do. Godzilla is just such it. That movie I didn't like. I, I watched a lot of Godzilla movies leading up to when when they just rebooted it. Uh, it was like 2016. Um, I love that movie. It's the great. 2016. That I feel like Godzilla. now that was actually the last movie I watched with my father before he passed away. Really? Wow. Yeah. It's, well, it's a good movie. It's I, a great I, movie. Oh yeah. Um, when they when they jump with no, the with what? the with the flares and they come yeah. and they go down. I and love it. All the Aaron smoke. Taylor Johnson's in it. It's he's such great. a good the, that that shot is unbelievable. What yeah. threw me off about that movie is it's the same year as Age of Ultron came out. And yeah. you see them as brother and sister, and then you see them making out. Yeah, yeah. that was weird. That was weird. You're right. It threw me off a little bit, but like that, that one's great. But so, what are you guys going with this? Uh, Godzilla or Wing Commander? Godzilla. I I, I, I I would probably have to say Godzilla was Godzilla was the what well, was the better sci-fi movie? All right. So we have officially passed. The what first had a row. better '90s sound movie soundtrack though? Was it Godzilla or was it Batman Forever? I was, I was literally going to ask is, that question. I swear to God, Casey. Yeah. When I was done writing, I, I was going to say Batman Forever. Is those, like were a the, great... those were the two movies where the where like the soundtrack was like the let's be honest, the best part of it. Doesn't it have that one song from Seal? Uh, Kiss from yeah. the Rose. Yeah, yeah it's great. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And then uh, <laughs> hold me, did hold he me call me? me? Kiss yeah. me, kill me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, which is one of the best U two songs. Yeah. This period. So now to start off round two, Back to the Future three, also known as Doc Brown in the Old West with a train versus <laughs> Lost in Space. I like I like Back to the Future. Now, three. while this is my least favorite Back to the Future, 
Yeah, I would still say it's Back to the Future, so it's it is over. it is the so, most set up sequel oh, yeah. ever. Like that I've I like obviously they they went into it knowing they were going to shoot two and then three right back to back, but if you rewatch two after seeing that, you pick up on so much stuff that they were hinting at ahead, like with and the the hidden, foreshadowing. Yeah, I actually it was just, great. I saw something online the other day. And it, so the shirt that Doc Brown wears in Back to the Future Two is his handker his his handkerchief. His bit, the yeah. bandana yeah. he and wears three. to rob the train. Yeah, in three, <laughs> like, and isn't that like one of the first? I'm uh, not Back to the Future Three, but Back to the Future Two was one of the first movies to have an after credit scene that was like a trailer for the next one. Yes, because I think they had already uh, shot yeah. most of three they, at that they, point. Yeah. They had sh- they, they were three, yeah they had crazy. shot it. Yeah. They had already shot it. It, yeah. it was I but they it. just they were still they were still editing and finishing up. I just, love it. I I think I the ending is really funny too. I I don't know if you've ever noticed. Uh, <laughs> there's the scene when Doc Brown's introducing his family. Uh, one of the kids, I, it's one of those things, once you know about it, you'll never not notice it. One of the kids, I think, had to go to the bathroom, like, during the take. So there's a scene, the camera's zooming in on Doc Brown, like, saying this, like, motivational thing. Meanwhile, the kid in the background is just pointing at his dick. Yeah. Multiple times, and it's it's the one, and it's in the movie, and you can go watch it. And That's it's, it's I never the funny thing. Awesome. Once you once you well, watch you that scene again, you'll it? never not see that again, and yeah. it's the weirdest thing. That's awesome. It's like Star Wars <laughs> when they, the stormtrooper hits their helmet and the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Literally, yeah. it's that. It's and then one you of those can't things. Yeah. yeah, no, and it it was not intended, but it was. It's one of the funniest things. I love Back to the Future Three. All right, so I. You guys all picked that, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Back to the Future 3. Love it. So, yeah. Bill and Ted it's gotta 2 go. versus 12 Monkeys. Uh, 12 Monkeys. Yeah, yeah 12, 12 Monkeys. 12 Monkeys. 12 Monkeys is one of the best, like, singular movies. You, It's perfectly wrapped in a bow. Like, the 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 time travel story is so it's they had you watch overhated <laughs> show spin off of that too. i swear to god i will kick your ass <laughs> he knows time i travel. almost want to do it but like Tw- I, 12 I, monkeys is so but i, I can good. see the writing on the wall like literally i can see the writing on the wall and it wouldn't matter because i, yeah, I know wouldn't. what's going further anyways so i'll give you your 12 monkeys <laughs> or will i <laughs> All right, Jurassic Park versus Fire in the Sky. I, I love I, Jurassic Park. That doesn't Jurassic. even it's, need an introduction. It's, it, um, you know, it's like we talk about Fire yeah. in the Sky. It's a fantastic movie. Everyone it's was in it. It was directed well. Like, it's a master. But Jurassic Park is Jurassic Park. Right. Jurassic like, Park. It's we've there, never there seen certain, anything like it. In that was the first exactly movie I went like and saw since. three times in the theater. There, there are certain uh, actors that I feel like can sell. Like a movie just based on their name, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum. He sold the shit. It was, out it was of every stupid in that laugh movie. that he does in the movie too. He's like, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeff Goldblum <laughs> being the I love most it. Jeff Goldblum. Like, yeah, it, yeah. So then we have Contact versus the X Files movie. Oh. X Files. Okay, so I didn't watch a lot of the X Files show. I did. Okay. I, loved I didn't it. Really? get to watch. I didn't Every get to Sunday watch night, it. Dude. I loved it. I didn't get Every to watch Sunday it. Well, because I didn't start off watching it, so then I would have. Be, that was back then. So what was your I, favorite seasons? I've never had, had to go back. I can tell you my favorite episode, but uh, and that was the one where it was uh, the the assassin who could make himself invisible. But it was just because he knew exactly where to like move and stance. So your brain couldn't pick him up. Right. It was the coolest. What? Yeah, yeah, it was so, the coolest thing. So, so he was like, at like the end, he's walking down a hallway and he just like moves and then they can't see him, but he's there. That's cool. It so was really cool. The That's early cool. Seasons, it, it, it's hard for me to remember. So like, so I, season I one was like Freak of the Week. They were right. like, you know, vampires, werewolves, so I UFOs. Lived over, I lived overseas when X Files premiered. Yeah. But one of our neighbors, who were also American, had the first, I think, four, three or four seasons on cassette yeah so i went through and watched it and then when we moved back to where i had access to american television i was caught up so the the first i want to say three or four seasons really kind of blended together i they got really good in five and six right is that what was going on in five Oh, man, I think five and six is where they were getting more into the government conspiracy. Yes. 
and yeah, yeah. they were really starting to make headway on this what thing. What season was it that this came out in between? I don't know, but this so this X Files movie, I was like, all right, I'm. I, it was literally at like somewhere for like two dollars, and I was like, okay. It, obviously, like I know, you can't take I know the a series and, and yeah. translate it into a, a two-hour flash. Yes. Right. Takes you, place, so that movie takes place before, in between five and six. Yeah. Okay. So, so 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 I'm like uh, I'm like okay I know enough about the characters to like watch this movie. I buy the DVD. I go home. I watch it, and I was like, the movie is incredible. It, the yeah, movie yeah. is utterly fantastic. Like you're the whole time you're like, mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's it, in. It's it's crazy. The new movie, the one that's like I want to believe, terrible. Yeah, that terrible. one's not good. I wanted to freaking. I would have rather done literally anything else in the world than watch that movie. It yeah, was, all I wrote was down awful. was Mulder and Scully fight the government in a conspiracy to find the truth about an alien colonization of Earth. That's all I wrote down because, yeah. quite literally, if you've ever seen any of the seasons of X Files, it's kind of the synopsis of the whole thing. Yeah, right. you know, so, Mulder's sister was abducted. Well, yep. You know, and he's trying to find his sister. Um, they have the the smoking man, yeah. you know. Uh, I think they just called him the smoking man. He's right? just the smoking man. I don't know. Yeah. He doesn't have a name. He didn't. I don't think he got a name till the revival series. Okay, he did get a name. I, I want to say he did, yeah. because isn't he? But he, they have this group of people. I think there was like seven or eight of them in the show that they were kind of like the Bilderbergs. You guys are familiar with that, like. The, the billionaires club yep. that meets every year that decides the fate for the rest of the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so they have this group of people that exist that know about this alien colonization, and as part of knowing about it and cro- controlling everything else, they'll be immune to the virus they're going to use to wipe out humanity. Yeah, okay. So yes. you know, that's I think that's the synopsis of the 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 whole. Um, Carl Bush is what that character's name is. Yeah. Huh. For so. me, I was never that big into um, X Files that much. I I was oh. more. I I feel like weren't they around the same time? Um, X Files and Twin Peaks were both like coming out at the same time. Well, Twin Peaks was like artsy. Yeah, yeah. and that's Twin why Peaks I, was <laughs> ending. And like yeah. he like the, the smoking man was actually Mulder's father. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. So I, I was more of a, a Twin Peaks kind of guy. I wasn't. The third act of this movie is just. Off the chain, like uh, X Files. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, because by the end you're like, and everything's like, it, it's all suspenseful. And yeah, there's this, well, you've you got, know. you know, I don't know when it first came out, but it was when it first came out. It was you were glued to your television. Yeah, I, I, like I said, like I still fully intend to go back and watch. Like, and then and they watch had X Files. Then the Lone Gunmen were part of that program too. Yeah. They they were the ones that were like, you know. At Roswell, the the computer hackers, the ones that ago. yeah, so they knew, they knew all the information. And, and yeah. yeah, contact is you know it's a big it's a big thinking man's movie. You mm-hmm. know it's like she, she drops into the light and she's gone for like point three seconds so here, yes. but she was so gone. X Files moves on, correct? Gone, yes, gone for X Files moves on. How many hours? Thirteen hours or yeah, something like so that. Was, she's gone. She's gone for. We were the, talking about that. Like to, to her, it was like thirteen yeah. hours. But to everyone else, or it was 18 just hours, thirteen. Uh, 15, like you 18 snapped hours, your finger. Like that. Yeah. It was like she like just some, fell some right Ant-Man through the thing. type stuff. Yeah. yeah. So we have the faculty versus hackers. Oh, oh faculty! We didn't even talk oh. about. Yeah, we were talking about this the other day. Such an awesome movie. Oh, Selma Hayek sucks. was the nurse. Yeah. This Josh Hartnett was the the drug dealer. I mean, you have a weird combination. You got the football player, the cheerleader, Urshan. the drug dealer, Urshan, the nerd. Uh, who who was the the, um, the football player? The nerd. Was Usher in this movie? Yeah, Usher, Usher, was in uh, uh, Usher was Usher was in the yeah. movie. So like all these students think that like their al- their teachers are aliens. Anyways, just because they're weird or older, and then it just turns out that they are. Turns they out become, that they are. And they, yeah, and then they become aliens. Yeah. yeah. So it was weird because they saw. Uh, who was the first person to get it in the movie? Was it some Hayek? No, it was uh, um, uh, Patrick. Um, yes, he, he played in the Terminator movie, right? Uh, yeah, uh, Ro- Robert Patrick. Robert Patrick. So the, the, he gi- gets the killed. Teacher. Yeah, he gets killed, but then. All of a sudden, he's back, and they're like, "How the hell is he back?" Yeah, yeah. Remember that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so these six kids, I think, were partnered up. And Josh Hartnett had a cool car. I remember that. Yeah, was my mom sh- loves yeah. this movie. I think he had a, sh- he had a, sh- Chevelle. a Chevelle. I think it was, think a, Chevelle. It was a Chevelle. I'm not sure, but it, now, it was an awesome. The question car. is, is it better than Hackers, Gary? Absolutely, I think so. 
So we got one. I feel like it's fan. probably more rewatchable, right? I was going to say, it's yeah. an easier watch. Yeah. So, Casey, what are you going for? I'd go faculty. All right, then I believe that. Garrett, you don't have to pick. <laughs> you don't have to pick, but we can get a veto. Oh, I'm not vetoing the. He's yeah. like, I'm not vetoing yeah, faculty. He's like, yeah, no. <laughs> Absolutely not. Men in Black versus Mars Attacks. I don't think we need to explain men that. In men in Black. Black. Men in Black. Yep. Here come the men in black. I love that series. Second episode mm-hmm. in a row of, of Will Smith appearance. Yeah. And then I can't really see. Chain Con- Reaction. Congo versus Chain Reaction. I love Chain Reaction. One, Keanu Reeves is in it. Yeah. Two, Keanu chain Reeves rea- is in it. <laughs> um, uh, uh, three, Keanu Reeves is in it. Four, yeah, but Morgan is Freeman is in it. Yeah, it's Morgan yeah. Freeman's Morgan in it. Freeman's but in it. But you also shot Keanu down. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. Earlier today with the. So Bill this this movie came out in ninety six. Bill and Ted, you shot down. Bill. Yeah, but that's not my fault. That's that's. It's Bill and. It's Bill so and yeah, where was Bill your enthusiasm bogus, with Bill and Ted? Yeah. Bogus journey. That's why. Because you're bogus. <laughs> that's a bogus movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> bogus Garrett. So chain oh. reaction. Chain um, reaction was they're at Chicago University and they're uh, basically they they have a research team. And they experience a breakthrough, and it's a stable form of fusion, so where they can take like a glass of water and power the entire city of Chicago for like a week or two. And so they're going to harness this technology, and maybe an outside agency, maybe the government, blows up like eight city blocks. And so their main suspects are the people in the lab. Did they think that they blew up their technology and they're the only ones with it, and now nobody can get it, or... Did somebody else do it? And now they have to prove their innocence. Yeah. So now, like the sh- there's like a shadow company like following them. Yeah. Uh, and so like it's it's movie. it's a thriller. The whole it's thing at the end where like they're trying to like escape, and there's the you know like they know that like this this explosion. That but they, is it they better? Rigged, they rigged the the fusion. <coughs> they essentially rigged the fusion bomb, right. and they're like it's gonna wipe out like miles, and we're like in the dead center. It's cra- it's a great. But movie. is it better than Congo? Ooh. I don't know, Joe. You got any insight on this one? This is a tough one, man. This is a tough one. So, the, so the way I gotta look at it is, and this is usually how I vote, unless I'm trying to fuck Garrett over. <laughs> is she loves doing? I don't know why. Like, yeah. which one do I personally like? Want to watch like that? Like, if I see him, like, ooh, like Chain Reaction's a great, great flick. How many times have I watched Chain Reaction? Once or twice. Yeah. yeah How many times? Like three, maybe four times. How many times have I watched Congo? A oh, lot. Over time. Like, yeah. Like, like I, I used to have Congo toys. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? So I have uh, more we're of. Going a, Congo. I, yeah, I, I, think, have, I think we're going yeah. Congo. Yeah, you make a great Congo. point. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to go there. Which one are you gonna? Which one are you gonna watch for? You have to watch if when you're really hurting. So are we gonna go like? A, an ape movie versus uh, Godzilla? Or are we going to go here and talk about no. Sphere? No, this talk is, about Sphere. This, so, so Sphere, what is Sphere? Sphere is Sphere. an unbelievable movie. Like this. Sphere? Okay. Sphere's uh, at the I, bottom I, of the ocean. <laughs> there's a sphere. There's a ship. <laughs> okay. The ship is alien. All right. They go, and they so they have to send down people to study the ship. The ship and what's inside. The only thing inside, Dustin Hoffman, the, is is he's in there. Is this giant gold sphere? Yeah, Dustin Hoffman's not in the sphere. Okay. No, Dustin Hoffman, Sharon Stone, and yeah, or is he? Right. And Samuel L. Jackson. Need I say more? All right. Well, I like Sam Jackson. So yeah, yeah. Not enough to watch. Secret so Invasion. Dustin Hoffman plays this guy named Norman. <laughs> Fair. Dustin Hoffman plays a guy named Norman Goodman and wrote a report for government on how to deal with extraterrestrial life forces. All right. He didn't expect his recommendations to ever be used, but he wrote them anyway. Now that a secret government agency, the OGB, is investigating what might be an alien spaceship that's been discovered, partially buried buried on the floor of the Pacific Ocean, now his outline is going to be used. So they, of course, reach out to him in person. You and this team are going to go down, and you're going to assemble a report. You and the original Gangster Boys. Yep. <laughs> but so and it's just like it's one of those movies that keeps you guessing the whole time because. So like, I remember the jellyfish scene. The oh my god, the jellyfish. Fuck. Scene. Yeah. No yeah. way. So what you're telling me 
is that this movie that I've never seen sounds so, infinitely more interesting than more the than imagine, really crappy <laughs> so, Godzilla movie. Is yeah. what you're saying. Oh. If you could, to manifest something, it was like the sphere was reading your mind and your fear was being manifested. Now, they were going from the ship to the other ship. And one of them's yeah, thinking the habit, about the habitats of the ship. Like yeah. the worst case scenario would be like a storm of jellyfish around them, and all of a sudden it's like and, th- yeah, all of a sudden jellyfish just oh, okay. like rain down, rain like down. They, you know, yeah. like all of a sudden there there there's just jellyfish. So yeah. Okay, yeah. So that movie does sound better it's, than Godzilla, and there, it's pretty scary at times. Yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely scary. All right, we're down to our last date. Back to the Future Three versus Twelve Monkeys. Back to the Future. I man, I do like the Back to the Future series, but Twelve Monkeys is its own film. I mean, this is a coin toss for me. Um, I'm gonna go Twelve Monkeys on this, and I'm gonna let you get that deciding factor. There is on this no deciding one. factor for me. It's Twelve Monkeys. Yeah. Damn, oh, wow. Twelve yeah. Monkeys had a really good what? TV show. Um, I, I never uh, saw the show. It got it got like um, it got kind of crapped on, but I like I liked it. Jurassic Park versus X Files. Jurassic Park Jurassic for sure. Jurassic Park, unfortunately. I mean, like, I, I, X Files yeah. movie is so good, but we're talking Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Uh, the first time I ever saw Velociraptor, I was glued. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, ooh, the Faculty versus Men in Black. Men in Black. The first Men in Black. Men in Black scream. I can't even. Men vote. in Black. Yeah. I can't even vote against the first Men in Black. Yep. If we were Men talking two. You know what I mean? You I didn't really like, like that. I like not, that. No, two. not two. In three, I actually kind of cried a little bit, but I'm not even going to lie. I didn't I was like, see three, actually. Three's not bad. I'm not crying. You're crying. You know, like <laughs> I did one of those. Sphere versus Congo. Sphere. Ooh. I'm going Sphere on this one. There's more sci fi. Sphere is sphere. better. Yeah, Sphere is better. Sphere better is cast, better. better budget. Sam Jackson. That's all I got to say. Yeah. <laughs> let's go, let's go. Sam Jackson. Um. Oh, no. Overruled. Oh, no. Really? Congo moves on. Oh. I love Congo. Uh, so do I. I do. Just, oh. And now we got two Michael Crichtons in the final four. <laughs> Jurassic right. Park. Dr- 12, 12 Monkeys versus Jurassic Park. Yeah, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. Park. Jurassic Park. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Men in Black versus Congo. I'm going the MIB. I. Yeah. Men in Black. Yeah. Men in Black. Men in Black over. Men in Black versus Jurassic Park, guys. Where are we ending? Oh, man. (laughs) Men in Black. Can we go aliens or do we go dinosaurs? Guys, are we going to surprise the audience? We have a T Rex here today. (laughs) (laughs) Garrett just gets grabbed from behind and pulled through the curtain. (laughs) No, Jeff Goldblum. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, This is tough, but I would go. Jurassic Park. I'm definitely going Jurassic Park. Wow, Jurassic Park wins it. Jurassic it's tough. Park. Yeah. I will Jur- never forget. Jurassic JP Park. wins 90 scythe. I mean, it kind of had to. It, it had was to. nothing. Yeah. You know, it's oh. like none of the sequels lived up. You know, it, it paved the way for CGI. Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, even the, the practical anim, animatronics, yeah. like they yeah. use, like it, they the, use most animatronics right. in that, and then some of it was CGI. But it was Wasn't how Sam they Jackson used it in together. Jurassic Park as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jackson was in everything. What a what a, what a good dude. <laughs> He's just a good dude. Yeah, until you find his arm in the yeah, he was yeah. The, he, he was the chain smoking um, yeah. Yeah. F- facility manager. Want to know how awesome Sam Jackson is? He was in Ghost Rider. That's right. Remember Ghost Rider? Yeah. I do. Love that show. Oh, I... When I was little. I, yes. I misheard what you said. I was like, he ghost was in Rider. Ghost Rider? No. no. Ghost Rider. Well, I was like... The PBS the show about... The PBS yeah. show about PBS. a ghost. Was it on like 7 like o'clock or 8 o'clock at PBS like on yeah. Sunday yeah. night? Yeah. yeah. Well, in the 90s, wasn't he like mainly just doing like... He was in a couple quick movies. He was just in any. Yeah, yeah, he was city. in. He was like in in coming to America. He was uh, he was still an unknown actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. You know. So that is ninety sci fi. Ninety sci fi Jurassic Park. Park. <laughs> Got to give it to it. It played out how I mostly thought it would. I, I yeah. thought JP was going to take it. Yeah. If I had to, if I had to look at one, I'm like, can, can if I could pit it against any other movie, it would have been Men in Black and then Sphere. Yeah. And then Twelve Monkeys. So I mean. Yeah, Twelve Monkeys, in my opinion, is one of the it's one of the best. Um, it's almost in its own time, category. It's, a, it's it, one yeah. of the best time travel movies that's ever been made. It's so 
It was so good well to win against Back to the Future, then I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> they'll they'll end up if we ever do a time travel episode, oh, yeah. they'll they'll both end up on on there. So time cop. So <sighs> time cop. <laughs> So good. I don't. You, I thought care. you said that was the best time travel movie. You know, it's Bill and Ted. Yeah, Bill and Ted. End game. Bi- Bi- Bill and Ted. It, um, what's his name? Um, George Carlin. Neil deGrasse Tyson uh, says that Bill and Ted is is the best uh, time travel movie uh, of all time. Because it's the most practical. Like when they when they're standing yeah. when they're standing there and they say like they're like all right we'll we'll in the future we'll just go and get the keys and we'll leave them right. Here, oh yeah, you know exactly. I mean? like, yeah. And then, so they have the keys oh, for when they great. need them. And then like he's like he's like, do you know how smart you got to be to write that scene? Like you know. And it was like, oh, it's great. Uh, yeah, it's because uh, oh. I, I actually went to um, Kate. Kate got his tickets. We went to a, a show that he did where it was like him and he presented stuff with movies because he's he's obviously he's like you know he's such a cool the, dude, but he also yeah. loves sci-fi movies at the same time. Right. So he wanted to do the, this is how. Someone like me watches these movies. You yeah. know what I mean? This is what happens. But he's also a very small so, demographic to be that smart. And, that's, you well, know. that's why he did that. And so that it was like, let's like, talk about yeah. this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, he shows Armageddon, you know, and it's like, hey, uh, here's uh, uh, when, uh, what's his name says? Uh, it's, uh, we only get to track 3% of the sky and it's a big ass sky. And then he pauses and he goes, that's the last, that's the only scientific true thing in this movie. And everyone laughs, you know what I mean? Yep. So, yeah, it's, but yeah, 90 sci fi. That was awesome. Awesome. Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park wins. Special thanks to Goff Family Chiropractic. Yes. If you need your back cracked, Travis will do it. Yeah, call him up. And if you throw him a tip, he might do other things. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This has been movie man. It's a whole other. It's a whole other room in the back. Yeah, <laughs> you, you need to be eighteen or older. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. We'll All see right. everybody see you next time. week, noon Fridays. Peace out, Girl Scout.